It being 7 p.m., the January 10th, 2023 Gardner City Council special meeting will come to order. The topic of tonight's special meeting is the State of the City Address by Mayor Nicholson. I'll now call the roll of the City Council. Councillor Boone. Present. Councillor Craig Cormier. Councillor Dernalowitz. Present. Councillor Ronald Cormier. Present. Councillor Heath. Present. Councillor Hardin. Present. Councillor Mack. Councillor Tyros. Present. Councillor Walsh. Present. The January 10th, 2023 Gardner School Committee special meeting will come to order. I'll call the roll. Mrs. Cormier. Present. Mrs. Hurst. Present. Mr. Lafrenier. Present. Mr. Schwartz. Present. And Mrs. ward Leighton. Those who are able, please now rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to recognize all the visiting officials who are here with us this evening. Representative Jonathan Zlotnick, former mayors of the City of Gardner, Alan Agnelli and Daniel Kelly. City of Gardner representative and chair of the Montachusett Regional Technical Vocational School Committee, Mr. Eric Commodore. Governors, Council, Governor's Council Paul DiPaolo, visiting members of the General Court, Representative Kimberly Ferguson, Representative Megan Kilcoyne, Representative Jay Barrows, Lemonster City Council President David Cormier, Lancaster Select Board Chair Steve Kerrigan, former Braintree Town Councilor Michael Owens, Westminster Town Administrator Stephanie Leighton, Templeton Town Administrator Adam Lamontagne, Athol Town Manager Sean Zahosky, staff from Senator Elizabeth Warren's office and staff from Congresswoman Laura Trahan's office. I would also like to welcome and thank all of our city department heads and employees who have joined us this evening for their dedicated service to our city and its residents. On behalf of the city council, the school committee, and the mayor, I'd like to welcome the new lieutenant governor of Massachusetts, Kimberly Driscoll. Well While she has been in office for less than one week, the Lieutenant Governor has proven time and again to be a friend of the Chair City, and it is an honor to have her with us here this evening. The City of Gardner looks forward to working with you, alongside Governor Maura Healy, leading our Commonwealth. As we say here in Gardner, we are all Wildcats, and on behalf of the City, Vice Chair Palavin and I, both former Wildcat basketball <laughs> players, and Mayor Nicholson, we would like to present you and Governor Healy with Gardner High School Wildcat basketball jerseys to take with you as you team up to move the ball forward in Massachusetts. Oh, thank you. I like that we're sticking with the theme very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be with all of you, uh, Mayor, as you give your State of the City remarks, and all of the local officials who are here and state officials. As someone who has been a champion for local government, many of you know I, I come from local government. I was the mayor in Salem for the last 17 years. And I know the importance of the work that happens in rooms like this uh, every, single, every single day. And certainly, I'm looking forward to hearing your remarks, talking about not only where you've been, but where you're going. You know, local government is the branch of government we rely on the most, and I think that's why this chamber is packed, and frankly, there's an overflow room. It shows that you have an engaged community who really care about what's happening on the ground. This is the rooms where we talk about how we're gonna educate our kids and keep our neighborhood safe and invest in those places that really matter in our community. And thinking about how we look ahead in a city, the, the chair city that has a, a really rich and proud past, how do we make sure we have a really bright future? And I'm elated to be working with the team that you have here in Gardner. I've had the good pleasure to work with both counselors and the mayor and legislative officials and thinking about how do we support efforts in Gardner. 
in a community that, as I said, has a proud past, but really has a rich future. I've walked the streets downtown. I've met some of the local business owners. I know that people really care about what's happening here and want to see that bright future. But most importantly, you've got aligned visions. You've got local leaders who are interested in finding ways to get to yes on having a shared vision for a community that wants to move forward. And for us as a state leader, I, I think I can speak for both the governor and ourselves, we want to be not only strong partners, but strategic allies in that work. We need uh, communities working and working well to ensure that we have a thriving Commonwealth. So I am just thrilled to be here on day, it's less than a week, it's day three. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those days was more celebration than work. <laughs> So I just want to say I'm, I'm here today um, and the third day uh, of being in this new role for me, um, but hope to come back many times, oftentimes with a check, which is usually how people want. But equally as important at times uh, as, uh, as bringing, uh, bringing resources, it's really sharing in this work. We truly see local government and state government in a very symbiotic relationship. And when the city of Gardner is doing well, the Commonwealth is doing well, and we want to make sure that's happening. So thanks for having me. Looking forward to the remarks ahead. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce the mayor of the city of Gardner, the Honorable Michael Joseph Nicholson, to deliver, a, to, sorry, to deliver the State of the City Address. <laughs> Members of the City Council and School Committee, family, friends, honored guests, and my fellow Gardnerites. 100 years ago, Mayor Chester Pearson stood before the newly elected city government as Gardner's first mayor and delivered his first inaugural address outlining the successes this community had as a town, laying out plans for the new city's future, and issuing a message of hope as they began the next chapter in Gardner's history. Two years ago, when I stood here to deliver this speech for my first time, there were only 10 people in the room, spread out and wearing masks. Hospitals were facing capacity concerns, testing kits were at the forefront of people's minds, and the first COVID-19 vaccines had only just been released. I concluded those remarks by stating that despite the uncertainty of the time, I was optimistic about the next years for our city, that our strength and perseverance would show resilience and present us with new opportunities. I'm proud to stand here today and say that we've stayed on that path and have set ourselves on a trajectory for continued success as we enter the next century in our city's history. <laughs> During the last two years, we made great strides to improve our financial standing. The balance in our stabilization account, our rainy day fund, is the highest it's ever been. Additionally, our finance team has worked to make sure that everything is done to protect the taxpayer's money and uphold our fiduciary responsibility to those who live here. For the second year in a row, we received a perfect score on our annual audit from our city's outside auditing firm. We are also making a concerted effort to return blight and underutilized properties to the tax rolls, increase our revenues, improve our neighborhoods, and return the spirit of our city into its forgotten corners. We have continued to invest in our schools to ensure that students have the resources they need in order to discover their potential and prepare themselves for future success. After several years of planning and construction, the new Gardner Elementary School is open to our students. This building will provide a 21st century learning experience in an environment that was built to, to meet the students' needs rather than retrofitted from a previous use. This is the first time that Gardner has constructed a purpose-built elementary school since 1923, when Prospect Street School was built. We have begun to improve and refurbish Landry Auditorium and LaChance Gymnasium at Gardner High School. Both have been fully repainted. The auditorium seats were replaced, new carpets were installed, and an acoustic improvement study is now underway. The basketball court in the gym has been refinished. You kind of come to Bristol. <laughs> new scoreboards, crash pads, and banners have also been installed. 
The Watkins Field renovation project will be completed this spring with a new concession stand and bathroom facilities. And in addition to the Watkins Field improvements, other fields at our Gardner Public School campus have also been improved. And this work included a new irrigation system, leveling of the field, reseeding the lawn, new baseball and softball diamonds, backstops, bullpens, tennis court, and the construction of a new fitness court as well. Two years ago, we reinstated our elementary school band program after it was cut from the budget in 2010. In its first year, 158 students were enrolled in the program. Today, over 200 students, over a third of the school's population, are now part of the band. To help boost our music programs across the district, we appropriated $100,000 in funding to purchase new equipment and supplies for all of our band, choral, drama, and general music programs in all of our schools. In the past two years, we've made unprecedented investments in our infrastructure as well. Since 2020, we've paved more miles of road than we have in the same time frame in our 100 years as a city. With that, we've also replaced all water pipes that were originally installed between 1860 and 1930. 1860, before the Civil War occurred. At the same time, utilizing community development block grant funds, we continue to improve our pedestrian infrastructure around the city. And this has included installing new sidewalks, street crossings, lighting fixtures, and bicycle signage throughout the downtown area. And working with Mass Development's Transportation Traffic Improvement Project Program, the Uptown Rotary at the intersection of Woodland Avenue, Pearl, Elm, Green, and Central Streets will be completely remodeled this spring to allow for a more efficient traffic flow. Our economic development measures have also proved to be successful as our commercial base continues to grow. Many, of our, many in our community remember a time when our downtown was a lively place that people frequented on a regular basis. In the 1930s, my great-grandfather, Al Sid Gogan, opened his barbershop on the second floor of the Flatiron Building at 25 Main Street, where he worked until he sold the business to Turk's Barbershop in 1973. While downtown faced economic challenges since then, we have taken tremendous steps to invigorate the area, supporting our long-standing establishments and welcoming new endeavors to the city. In the past two years, amidst the economic challenges of a pandemic, 35 businesses have either newly opened their doors, expanded, or are under new ownership, with the majority of these businesses locating in our downtown. Recognizing that we as a city need to play a key role in our economic recovery efforts from the pandemic, not only to help these new businesses and property investments survive, but also assist our long-standing establishments, we created several economic assistance programs utilizing funding we received from both the state and federal government. Awarding over three quarters of a million dollars to help our new and existing businesses with things like rent, mortgage payments, utilities, and other unexpected costs that came with running a business during a time of a pandemic shutdown. Our businesses showed faith in our community during the COVID-19 pandemic, and we returned the favor, as we always should. However, our economic development goals would be incomplete if we did not safeguard our future while moving forward from our past. Blight, vacant properties, and absentee landlords are problems that must be proactively guarded against. With that in mind, my office, working with Councillor Tyros, drafted an ordinance unanimously approved by the City Council to arm our building and health departments with the tools they need to go after these problem properties that too often drag a whole property down with them and prevent issues before they occur. Yes, the last few years were tough. The world changed, our city changed, but with that comes change for the better. Working together, we transformed uncertainty into opportunity. Where other cities around the country saw businesses close and storefronts boarded up, Gardner saw economic growth like it hasn't seen in decades. Where other cities around the country questioned how they would stay afloat financially, Gardner continued to cement our solid financial foundation. While other cities delayed projects, Gardner invested in our schools, improved our infrastructure, increased our recreational opportunities. And because of all of this, I'm proud to stand here today and report as clearly as I can that the state of our city is strong. We have many things to be proud of, but there's still a lot more planning to do. As we work to prevent problem properties, transform blight into promise, and hold the private sector to a high standard, we continue to hold ourselves to that same level. 
The opening of our new school gave us new opportunities with our former school buildings. Working with private sector partners, we've begun the process of revitalizing the areas of the former School Street School and Prospect Street School buildings. Elm Street School, which currently hosts Gardner Academy and the Gardner Boys and Girls Club, will soon house the central office staff for the Gardner Public Schools District. In the coming months, work will soon begin to transform the former Water Street, Waterford Street School into the new Gardner Community Center to house the Gardner Senior Center, Gardner Community Action Committee, Growing Places Food Processing Center to assist with food insecurity problems in the region, and GAMMA's community-based adult day program. All four of these organizations have previously worked together, but by bringing them all together under one roof, they can continue to grow and expand their services, work more closely and efficiently with each other, and better serve the residents who live here. I would be remiss if I did not give a special thank you to Representative Zlotnick for his partnership in this endeavor, both in bringing these stakeholders together and for obtaining a $400,000 appropriation from the state legislature for this project as well. <laughs> Utilizing community development block grant funding, the Greenwood Indoor Pool Building and the former Rome Furniture Building on the corner of Main Street and Willow Street are coming down. The construction of a new pavilion at the Greenwood Pool site and the work being done to transform the National Grid site into a waterfront park will improve one of Gardner's most cherished recreational areas. The work planned for Rear Main Street will break ground this spring, utilizing over $6 million from the Commonwealth's MassWorks grant program. This area with so much potential will soon have a 160 parking space parking lot, event plaza, food truck parking, picnic area, amphitheater seating, <laughs> fountain, shade pavilion, and increased opportunities for public art, and more. All of which will complement the new residential building that will be constructed on Rear Main Street, adding around 100 new market rate apartments. Work will begin this spring to renovate the locations of Mackey, Orpheum, and Chair City Parks to include outdoor seating opportunities, fountains, historical information markers, and community gathering spaces. Our five-phase infrastructure improvement project will be entering its third phase this year with new lightings, sidewalks, and pedestrian safety improvements being made along the perimeter of Monument Park and Park Street to Crystal Lake Drive. We have also begun studying the feasibility and merits of extending our infrastructure improvements to the South Gardner Village Center, including a plan to move the overhead utility wires into underground conduits. That work <coughs> and the work we've done and the successes we've achieved are entirely thanks to the teamwork that our officials at all levels have displayed. I'd like to thank the members of the City Council and the School Committee, our legislative delegation, and all of our partners in government at every level, and our private sector partners, for consistently coming together to build a community that we can all be proud to call our home. This is how government should work. Far too often, people view holding political office as theater. With the foremost responsibility, clicks on social media and their foremost motivator, personal gain. However, that's not the case here. When a problem in Gardner arises, we come together, find a solution, and just do what needs to get done. To compete against our region and others, both near and far in an ever-increasing global economy, Gardner needs to be and thrives as a well-oiled machine when we all work together for the same goal. As we move into this new year and the next chapter, in our, in our city's history, I look forward to us continuing to work together and setting the example for others to follow. With that, I'd like to leave you with the words that Mayor Pearson used to close the city's first inaugural address 100 years ago. Let us resolve to lend our energies to make the city of Gardner a leader in the Commonwealth. Its advancements can be accomplished by holding true to high ideals, by keeping mutual faith and a spirit of honest and intelligent citizenship. God bless you all. God bless this great city. God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And God bless America.
was present, there is a reception in Mayor Frederick Perry Memorial Auditorium in City Hall immediately following adjournment. I will entertain a motion on the part of the school committee to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Schwartz, seconded by Mrs. Hurst. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will entertain a motion on the part of the City Council to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lowe, seconded by Councilor Tyros. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, everyone.